I'm Cameron Deach, Chief Revenue Officer here at Atlassian. And today we're going to talk about the digital and cultural transformation occurring in all of our organizations. But first, a disclaimer. The following is intended to outline our general product direction for informational purposes only. It is not a commitment to deliver any material code or functionality and should not be relied upon in making purchasing decisions. The development, release, and timing of any features or functionality described herein remains at the sole discretion of Atlassian. And now we got the fun disclaimer out of the way, let's get down to business. So you might know Atlassian as the company that makes products like Jira Software, Confluence, Trello, Bitbucket, and Bamboo. But in reality, we're a company dedicated to helping teams work better together. It's our core belief that every major accomplishment in business or in government requires a team to come to life. And while we have over 200,000 customers around the world, we're very proud that we've helped over 1,000 government agencies unleash their team potential every day. This is the core of what makes for real and lasting transformation in how we operate and how we execute on all of our missions. Transformation begins at the core. The core unit of any organization is the individual and the team that individual is a part of. It can be a program team or an agency department team, but achieving real and lasting transformation requires unlocking the potential of every individual within every team. And that can be hard to do, especially in government where people, programs, and agencies overlap and where culture is firmly rooted in preservation versus transformation. Transformation in government can be seen in two key areas, remote work and modernization of key processes. Now let's talk about how and where these two are connected and what it means for government agencies. And I want to give you a way to think about them. First, remote work. We know that transformation was already in progress and that the pandemic accelerated our efforts towards remote work, and it was big. Despite billions of dollars of IT investment over the years, only 3% of federal workers actively worked remotely daily prior to COVID. But of course, COVID changed all of that. Now 59% of federal agency employees work remotely every day. And we know that 67% of federal employees will likely continue working remotely at least part-time, and over a quarter of them will work fully remote from now into the future. But did we actually change how we work? How well do we really adapt to this new environment? Well, the first change we all felt was around synchronous communications. In-person meetings and quick conversations in the office quickly were replaced by Zoom and Slack or Microsoft Teams. But distributed workforces needed more than Zoom, email, and Slack. While the communications continued, simply moving all communications online created new challenges and lots of wasted energy. Zoom fatigue, Slack overkill, all of our teams quickly became overwhelmed and productivity is wasted. Figuring there's 25 million workers in the US public sector, we know the average worker spends 13 hours per week reading and responding to emails. That's equivalent to over $7,000 per year per person dealing with spam, unnecessary emails, and deciphering poorly written communications. The average worker also spends eight hours per week and 31 hours per month in unproductive meetings, resulting in over $37 billion wasted. So what do you think since COVID? Has this improved or gotten worse since you all went remote? We need more than just communications to keep our teams productive. We need a cultural and a digital transformation. Think about it. It took a threat to the continuity of government to accelerate meaning trans meaningful transformation in how government works. Why is that? because digital transformation is intertwined with cultural transformation. To change one, you have to change the other. Now, when we talk about work in highly effective teams, we're normally talking about people, okay? The people that get your jobs done, the people in your team, the people you work with every day, but also the practices, the ways your team works every day. How do you show up to meetings? How do you prep for sessions? When do you log on? When do you communicate? You also need to complement that with technology whether that's your synchronous communication tools or your more sophisticated applications that use AI, machine learning, automation. But we need to complement that with place. What's the physical environment in which all of us are working? Is it remote? Is it in the office? Is it both? And lastly, the security policies of the data and infrastructure around all of this. This is what agencies are in control of. Who is hired, how they work, the tools they use, their office space, and the security measures they deploy. Now, it's very important that these elements are congruent, that the people and teams are well-equipped to thrive with scalable work practices, embracing the tools they need to succeed and all within a secure working environment. But work just isn't about the what, 
We also need to take another dimension and look at the who we're serving. Let's look at it from a government agency perspective. The primary audience tends to be your own agency, but work doesn't happen in isolation. There's a network effect to everything you do. Agencies don't just serve your own employees. Of course, you also deeply care about the programs and services you provide and the people in those programs who rely on agency capabilities, your constituents. But beyond that, you have influencers, other people in other agencies around your teamwork, and you care about the broader ecosystem of vendors, integrators, community, and people working in the broader ecosystem. This is the who an agency serves. And it's very important that these elements are congruent, that the values and standards that you hold for your employees is consistent with your programs, services, constituents, and resonates with those people in your ecosystem. Now, the third and final dimension is time or when. Are we solving for the now or are we solving for the future? If you look at remote work as an example, there's a spectrum of when an organization undertook that mission. Some were building it from the ground up. The government printing office was the first agency to offer full-time remote work. Others evolved over time, and some are just transforming now. What's fascinating about this, when you think about the future of work, is all these dimensions and elements are interlinked. Let's walk through an example that we can probably all empathize with, COVID-19. So if we focus on the first dimension and pick places, this was the first action many agencies took when responding to the crisis. What did your agency do? Chances are you closed your offices and asked people to work from home instead. Did you have the basic tools you needed to work efficiently, to collaborate effectively? Many agencies had to start really at the grassroots levels and move up from there. For example, the state of Washington saw VPN user loads shift from 3,000 users to 29,000 congruent users. That was a real problem that had to be solved. But it's not just about the tools. Agencies have had to change practices significantly. Shifting to a new place meant that all of the practices around the old place had to be revamped. How each team managed their work, how you managed projects, how your agency hired and interviewed and onboarded, how teams met and made decisions, how you communicated and engaged every day, kind of get the picture. And for many of you, your agency hasn't quite gotten to this point yet. You're still using the old ways in new places, and it can be painful. So that solves it for the agencies, right? But what about constituents, programs, integrators in our ecosystem? It's the same thing. There needs to be a new set of practices for each of these stakeholders now that we're all in new places. And even if we solve it for now, it's just the immediate response to the crisis. What about the future? As office space opens up and we get a mix of work from home and work from office, we'll need to change again. And when the tools improve, as our practices of how we work evolve, new programs emerge and old programs pivot. When we look into the future, this will all change again. And as you can imagine, all of these transformative changes, if done well, have a pretty dramatic impact. We're seeing some of these now and more as we continue to transform. So what is true now? You clock in and clock out according to a schedule. Working day is Monday to Friday, nine to five, and set hours that support synchronous collaboration with your team. And work occurs at a desk in the agency or at a service counter or a production line. But what will be true? Work when you're most productive, asynchronously. Work from anywhere with distributed and remote teams and with online tools that enable real connections. Let's talk about that second area, modernization of capabilities. By 2025, Gartner estimates that more than half of government agencies will have modernized critical core legacy applications and that 95% of new investments will be delivered as a service. But we still wanna solve the problem we still won't have truly transformed our environment. Data will still sit in silos. The constituent will still have to bounce from app to app, re-entering data. The outcome will be faster service, but not necessarily better service. How does that modernize things? It's about the people, which brings us back to culture again. And in government, especially, modernization of services and capabilities is all about people. Now, the National Security Agency understands this. They had a small team of less than five maintaining more than 40 deployed systems for a large department. They were overwhelmed. They needed something that would incorporate structure and consistency and could unite the entire department. Their evaluation led them to JIRA software. For the NSA's needs, JIRA worked out of the box so they could get started right away with just a few minor tweaks. At the start, the dev teams loved JIRA, but the operations teams weren't happy about the switch. To make it all work, they needed to work on culture. 
It couldn't just be about mandates. So it became an evolving pattern of process, automation, and transparency, a bartering, if you will, a give-get of control that led to alignment and adoption. The stakeholders had, to, stakeholders had to see what was in it for them, and that the small but mighty administrative team helped them do exactly that. For every step forward a team took, they actually had to get something in return. That small team understood this. Over time, that small team created an agency of champions, which helped to drive adoption through the agency and major success for the small but mighty team that had started it all. So similar to transforming how you work, transforming how you deliver capabilities and services isn't just about digitizing them. We have to rethink how to achieve the services mission in the most modern and most advanced way, starting with the recipient of the services and the team providing them. Then transform your culture, processes and tools around those sets of needs. In the process, you have to shift, shift from a list of requirements to delivering compelling experiences that really move the needle. And we're doing exactly that with the defense media activity. DMA needed a way to expand and increase the capability of the public web program for the Department of Defense, but realized the current process and tools wouldn't help them project manage their web hosting and content management services for more than the 750 military websites they manage around the globe. There were technical process and cultural issues. This led to a complete lack of integration with the IT operations and development teams. They used Atlassian's products, Jira Software, Jira Service Management, and Confluence, along with a new customer-centric set of workflows and processes to help tear down the walls between teams, open communication lines, eliminate, eliminate duplicative work, and move DMA to a customer and performance-focused operation. The results were impressive. With Atlassian, the CIO was able to transform the public web program service desk within five weeks under stringent security requirements. The new system has increased IT productivity by 39% and customer satisfaction by 10%, at the same time boosting internal collaboration. So why focus on all of this now? Agencies have unprecedented funds to set lofty goals, do things differently, and rise to this historic opportunity. About $230 billion is set to be spent on federal, state, and local IT budgets. But that's not all a $770 billion national defense bill that delivers historical amounts of funding for traditional and disruptive technologies and substantially overhauls and streamlines procurement for innovative technologies. Plus bills like the $2, billion, $2 trillion infrastructure bill, which provides a once in a generation investment into Americans' infrastructure, jobs, security, welfare, and more. So where does Atlassian fit in all of this? Atlassian helps government teams work better together. Through a set of innovative tools, practices, and partners, we help government agencies transform. We've taken our world-class tooling and organized them in three areas that support government missions and accelerate transformation. The backbone of these tools are JIRA and Confluence. JIRA is the leading project management solution for government agencies today. It manages and automates project tasking, and JIRA's dynamic reports and dashboards track status of work against requirements, giving real-time visibility into project bottlenecks and issues. Confluence cuts meeting time by 60% and provides single, secure source of truth to acquire and share our knowledge and communicate across teams. From there, we've created tooling that supports Agile and DevOps teams. And the same Agile methodologies and efficiencies that our tools bring to software development can be applied to IT service management and operations. We're able to help government ITSM and IT ops teams work better together with automated and connected service flows using Jira service management, Ops Genie, and Status Page. They work together to provide continuous delivery of services and applications from IT out to the enterprise. Speaking of the enterprise, we are helping teams of all kinds effectively manage their work to become more agile and productive, no matter where they are located. Our work management offerings with Confluence and Trello help agency teams and individuals better plan, organize, and track what they're trying to accomplish in a secure, easy to use, and collaborative way. And tools like Jira Align link your mission goals to execution in a single source of truth across departments, programs, and teams, and reduce program waste. But it's more than that. Underlying all of our solutions are a common set of guiding principles that can be tied back to our mission of unleashing the potential of every team. Let's discuss another example, Space Force and Atlassian. As you all know, the Space Force is the youngest branch of the armed forces. But even as the youngest branch, it has struggled to share critical information and data with one of its suppliers, 
SpaceX to ensure safe and timely launches. With the help of Atlassian's partner, Ascend, the Space Force was able to create a prototype Atlassian environment consisting of Jira software, Jira service management, and Confluence to manage and maintain the maintenance items and categorizations within SpaceX. The solution makes it possible for Space Force users to quickly upload, update, review, and finalize maintenance-related tasks and build-outs. This ensures launches undertaken by both SpaceX and Space Force are safe, secure, and successful. But as I mentioned earlier, it's not just the software that helps with digital transformation. To change your culture, you need to operate differently, to look at the everyday interactions of your team and apply new practices, rituals, and communications. Here we can help as well. Atlassian has built a suite of playbooks and guides, all free, that can help you transform your culture and processes. How does your team make a decision? How do you manage a team meeting or a standup? How do you do retros of projects you've delivered? We have playbooks for all of these and dozens more. They're not dependent on our software and are actionable and highly effective. So go and download them today at atlassian.teamplaybook.com. At Atlassian, we continue to invest and grow our dedicated government team. This team is equipped with the experience and knowledge to support the unique needs of our government customers. And the Atlassian government team is supported by over 50 partners who specialize in working with public sector organizations. These partners make it easier for you to transact, implement, and support your Atlassian solutions at scale. And we've been committed to supporting government agencies from the first year we started. We have steadily invested year over year to support the needs of all agencies. One area that we've continued to invest in has been our platforms. As you know, we've prioritized our investment in our secure cloud platform. We're proud of its security, robustness, and capabilities. At the same time, we've been streamlining and investing in our data center platform for those of you who still prefer to manage your own infrastructure. Let's dig into each platform a bit more. Data center is a core platform for our solution offerings. It delivers unprecedented performance at scale in a self-managed form factor with a variety of deployment options. Along with that performance comes broad flexibility and high availability that enables you to meet just about any mission requirement and highly customizable compliance and security controls so you can meet your agency's requirements like SAML. The streamlining of our self-managed offerings in 2020 has allowed us to continually make investments that will enhance and fuel our transformation. And we have some exciting news. We know how important the self-managed capabilities of data center are for teams of all sizes in the public sector. We are very excited to formally announce lower user tiers of data center exclusively for the public sector. These tiers open up the scalability, performance, and security of the self-managed data center platform to smaller teams. They currently cover three of our most popular solutions. If you want to know more, please contact your government verified partner, Kerasoft, or your Atlassian public sector representative. Additionally, our secure cloud platform will scale effortlessly with your agency, with all of the features you'd expect from an enterprise cloud provider. As we continue our investment in our secure cloud platform, we're happy to announce a few key milestone updates. FedRAMP will be coming in 2023. HIPAA compliance support is currently slated for this calendar year in our JIRA Confluence and JIRA service management solutions. And bring your own key encryption. In a few months, we will offer BYOK, giving you the ability to encrypt your cloud product data with keys hosted in your own AWS account. With BYOK encryption, you'll have more control over the management of your keys and will be able to revoke access at any time, both for your own end users and for Atlassian systems. Thank you for listening in today. As you just heard, Atlassian is working hard to help each and every one of your teams transform in this incredibly dynamic environment.